Hello and welcome to Study IQ. This video will be in English language for my English viewers. So in this video, I will bring to you the best multiple choice questions from the first week of November. That is from 1st to 7th of November. I have covered 125 multiple choice questions. Uh, almost 50% of the questions you will not find anywhere. All the questions are made personally by me and I have a copyright for these questions. Now you can follow me on Facebook. Do follow me on Facebook because uh, there are a lot of updates which you miss. I keep reading in comments that uh, you want PDFs or you want uh, some special video to be made and all the information is shared on my Facebook page. So it is not possible for me to reply to your individual queries since there are thousands of queries and hundreds of emails that I re receive each day. So it is wise to follow me on Facebook and get your queries sorted. That's the link that you have to follow www.facebook.com slash education and I thank you all. I have uh, reached 20,000 followers today. Now our pen drive, uh, we are launching day after tomorrow for uh, CTET and KVS. We have given special emphasis on uh, teaching methodology, child psychology, child development, pedagogy and these topics. There's, there are very good lessons uh, available for Hindi subject also taught by some of the best names in Delhi. And GLAD pen drive we are launching day after tomorrow. So there's a lot to, lot to look forward to. And our IBPS pen drive is still selling for specialist officer, for uh, PO, uh, for clerk and SSC, CHSL and stenographer. If any of the pen drive you wish to buy, you need to call this number 9580048004 or you can email to me gaurav.studyiq at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's begin. Before I begin, uh, I have a little sore throat today because of the pollution in Delhi. My throat has uh, kind of caught up with me and uh, so you might uh, feel a difference in the quality of voice, but I'll try my best. So the first question is, which ex-serviceman committed suicide on the issue of one rank one pension one rank one pension so his uh, salary uh, initially was 13,000 rupees then because of the one rank one pension his salary was 28,000 rupees uh, around 20,000 rupees were deposited in, in his bank he was unhappy because of the implementation of one rank one pension and he committed suicide his uh, name was Ram Krishan Garewal and there is a serious politics going on BJP is saying that uh, uh, he um, cannot be called a martyr because he I mean, he committed suicide because of personal reasons. Whereas Aam Aadmi Party, Congress and other parties, they are saying that uh, he died because of the poor implementation of the one rank, one pension scheme. So a lot of politics is going on uh, because on his suicide. The issue has completely politicized. So this question is important. Ram Krishan Garewal was the name of the ex-army serviceman who committed suicide. Now, 31st October, we celebrate the birthday of a great person. A great person, one of the greatest freedom fighters we know. He was also called Iron Man. And every year, whichever week 31st October falls in, that week we celebrate as Vigilance Awareness Week. Which birthday, the birthday of which great Indian freedom fighter am I talking about? Now listen to the question carefully. 31st October we celebrate the birthday of a great freedom fighter. And whichever week that 31st October falls in, that week we celebrate as Vigilance Awareness Week. Now that week might, might very well... Uh, you know be the first week of November like that but 31st October has to be a part of that week that week is called Vigilance Awareness Week this great freedom fighter is Sardar Vallabhai Patel who is also known as uh, Iron Man of India and Sardar Vallabhai Patel his uh, uh, you know uh, his birthday is celebrated as National Unity Day so 31st October every year is celebrated as National Unity Day so all these things you have to remember on the occasion of Rashtriya Ekta Divas, in English, uh, Rashtriya Ekta Divas is National Unity Day. So National Unity Day is nothing but Rashtriya Ekta Divas. That is the birth anniversary of Sadar Vallabhai Patel. Which state government organized Run for Unity? One of the state governments in India organized Run for Unity, which was basically a marathon race to commemorate this great occasion. That is the birthday of Sadar Vallabhai Patel, the Iron Man of India. And this was done by Maharashtra. The Chief Minister of Maharashtra is Devendra Fadnavis and... The government that is ruling Maharashtra is BJP and Shiv Sena combined. Which state government observed No Tobacco Day all over the state on November the 1st? No Tobacco Day. So you know that tobacco is of two types. One is chewable tobacco. Like uh, it is there in gutka, pan masala and uh, these things. And other you have the smokable tobacco like the BD and the cigarette. Uh, and uh, both of these are very very harmful for our health. No Tobacco Day was observed in association with World Health Organization, which is an agency of United Nations. 
Now you know that United Nations was established uh, on 24th of October and World Health Organization, its headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. United Nations headquarter is in New York along with UNICEF. UNICEF and United Nations both headquarter is in, uh, is in New York. No Tobacco Day was observed in, it was observed in Punjab. And this is an important question. Punjab, the party that is ruling is Shiromani Akali Dal plus BJP combined. Mostly it is Shiromani Akali Dal. Most of the legislative assembly members are from Shiromani Akali Dal. And the chief minister is Prakash Singh Badal. Prakash Singh Badal. These are the details which you should know. And the health minister of Punjab is Mr. Surjit Kumar. So you should know health minister because this question is related to health. No tobacco day in association with WHO in Punjab. Now we have uh, just concluded, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have not concluded it. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a military exercise. There was a military exercise between India and Singapore. It was a naval military exercise. So whenever, see the questions related to military exercises are very, very frequent. Uh, these are not related to just defense, but this is very common these days, you know. So India and Singapore, they did a military exercise. It was of Navy. So whenever such question is put up, they will only ask you uh, the name of the exercise and nothing else. Still, it is good to know, uh, you know, whether it was uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, whether it was uh, all operations, etc. So it was a five day uh, exercise. It was uh, held at Vishakha Patanam, which is in Andhra Pradesh. It is a coastal town in Andhra Pradesh. And this was called Simbex the 16th. Simbex the 16th between India and Singapore. There are other options also which interest me here. Yudh Abhyas is between India and USA. Hand in hand is between India and China. Shaheen Eagle is between Pakistan and China. Goods and Services Tax Network. See, we have a dedicated video on Goods and Services Tax Bill. Do check that out. It was 122nd Amendment of the Constitution. And there's a very good video made by, uh, you know, made by one of our uh, teachers, Vignesh Karthik and Jay, two of our teachers. So do check that out. Now, Goods and Services Tax Network, it is basically a company that the job of this company will be to implement the goods and services tax across the country. Now, the question that you have to uh, answer is that how much money this company, which is called the Goods and Services Tax Network or GSTN, will borrow from banks to fund these infrastructure projects. So, uh, the infrastructure pro uh, cost or the infrastructure projects will be undertaken to implement the GST by GSTN and for that GSTN will raise how much money? It will raise 800 crore rupees. Super important question. Next question, same. What is the stake of government of India in goods and services network? So as I told you, goods and services network will raise 800 crore rupees. Now out of that, 49% will be by the government. Now listen to the question carefully. 49% will be by the government and 51% will be by the private companies. Now, out of these 49%, state and center will have half-half. So, 24.5% will be the state and 24.5% will be the central government stake. So, they are asking government of India, which means central government. So, 24.5% is the answer. Had they asked just the government, center and state combined, the answer is 49%. Had they asked private companies, the answer is 51%. So, listen to the question carefully. Now, out of 800 crore, 24.5%, that is 250 crore rupees is the share of the uh, of the government central government 250 crore is of the state government and the remaining that is uh, uh, that is 51 percent that you can just calculate that will be the share of the private financial institutions Ashok Chawla he is the new non-executive uh, chairman of Yes Bank which is a private bank Ashok Chawla is the new chairman of Yes Bank now, previously, he was also a chairman of one of the big organizations. Which organization am I talking about? So, he was the chairman of Competition Commission of India, which is called CCI in short. Which state has been ranked, has been adjudged as the country's most farmer-friendly state according to Niti Aayog's Agriculture, Marketing and Farmer-Friendly Reforms Index? So, this was, a, this was an index undertaken by Niti Aayog. What is Niti Aayog? Niti Aayog is the new name of Planning Commission. Previously, we used to have Planning Commission. Now, we have Niti Aayog. And Niti Aayog has three important positions. So, the chairman of Niti Aayog is Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The vice chairman is Arvind Pangaria. And the CEO is Mr. Amitabh Kant. Previously, the CEO when Niti Aayog was formed was Sindhu Shri Kullar. But now, the CEO is Amitabh Kant. These are three important people with respect to Niti Aayog. And uh, uh, this was very important index. And the most farmer-friendly state in India is Maharashtra. That's right, Maharashtra. Is the most uh, farmer friendly state in India. Which Formula 1 driver 
won the Mexican Grand Prix. So Mexican Grand Prix was in Mexico, which is a country in North America continent. And the capital of Mexico is Mexico City. It is uh, among the countries which is doing very well in terms of economy. Mexico. The capital is Mexico City. There are a lot of such uh, countries where the capital name is also same. Like Singapore capital is Singapore City. Like that there are a lot of cities. So we are talking about car racing here. Formula 1 Mexican Grand Prix was won by Lewis Hamilton. And he, there was a lot of pressure on him because Nico Rosberg has a huge lead over him. Now Lewis Hamilton drives which car? He drives Mercedes. And Nico Rosberg drives which car? Again Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton is from Britain and Nico Rosberg is from Germany. These all details you should absolutely know. In hockey, let's switch to hockey. Which team lifted the men's Asian Champions Trophy in a thrilling final at Kuantan? Kuantan is a place in Malaysia. The capital of Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur. It is a Muslim majority country, Malaysia. And the capital is Kuala Lumpur. Roughly 65% are Muslims. Then 28% are Buddhist. Hindus are quite less in Malaysia. The capital is Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and it is located at the juncture of, uh, you can say, Indian Ocean and South China Sea. That is Malaysia. Now, which team won the men's champions trophy? It is India. And India beat which team in the final? That also you should know. So, India beat Pakistan in the final. 3-2. 3-2. And uh, uh, the player of the tournament was Rupinder Pal Singh. R.P. Singh. Uh, he scored 11 goals. World Bank declared which state in India as number one in energy efficiency? So, everything is self-explanatory here. World Bank's president is Jim Yong Kim. And the headquarter of World Bank is in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is the capital of America. Why it is called Washington, D.C.? Because it is named after the first president of United States of America. The name was George Washington. That is why it is called Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., you also have the headquarter of the IMF, which is, in, which is International Monetary Fund. World Bank declared which state in India is number one in energy efficiency? It is Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh. World Bank is also called one half of the Bretton Woods twins. Bretton Woods system had World Bank and IMF. Now Andhra Pradesh, the ruling party is called Telugu Desam. And uh, the chief minister name is uh, Chandra Babu Naidu. Chandra Babu Naidu. Which country launched a next generation geostationary meteorological satellite called Himavari 9? So this was a satellite which is called Himavari 9. It was launched by which country? This country is Japan. And why have they launched this satellite? They have launched this satellite because they wanted to improve their weather services in the Asia Pacific region. Himavari 9, the name suggests that it might be Indian, but it is not Indian. It is Japan. Now, Japan, the currency is yen and the capital is Tokyo. And uh, you should also know, know the head of state who is Shinjo Abe. One more thing, don't confuse between yen and yuan. Yuan is the currency of China. Malaysia recently bought four ships, four naval vessels from which country to handle the South China Sea disputes bilaterally. So South China Sea dispute, there is a dedicated video on the South China Sea dispute. In fact, I made a video on CP, CPEC also, which is China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. And you can see South China Sea disputes. You can, you can appreciate in both these videos. Now, uh, South China Sea is a very disputed area because a lot of countries, they, they uh, you know, exert their claim on the islands which are present in the South China Sea, like the Shalberg, Soal, like there are other islands also. There is a tension between Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, China, to some extent Japan, like that. Uh, although the problem with, between China and Japan are majorly in the East China Sea, but even in some part of South China Sea, uh, Japan and China, they do have tensions, especially in the North Eastern part of the sea. So Malaysia recently bought four naval vessels from China. So there is a kind of a bone homie which is uh, taking place between Malaysia and China. Do recall that Philippines and China are also very close now courtesy Duterte. So Mr. Duterte has said that he will not even talk to United States of America because he, um, you know, he uh, smells a new world order. So China, Russia and Philippines, he says is a triangle and they will counter US and all that thing. So China and Philippines and Malaysia, they are all coming quite close. Even uh, I'll talk, uh, I'll talk about uh, China, Sri Lanka relations also, which are becoming very strong. Which Indian has been elected by the United Nations to its top body of legal experts? So the top body of legal experts of the United Nations, one Indian has made it. Who is he? His name is, he's a young Indian lawyer. His name is Anirudh Rajput. Anirudh Rajput, he uh, got a seat in the UN. He won the seat in the UN General Assembly elections for the membership to the top body of the legal experts. And he is among 34 individuals 
who are who were elected by the general assembly 34 total members are there in this so uh, and the newly elected members will serve a five year term so anirudh rajput has been elect, uh, elected for a five year term now india's president pranam mukherjee he awarded one of the very prestigious awards which is called presidential colors to which two military units so two military units now um, uh, he gave presidential color award which two units are these so one is the 30 squadron of air force and one is the 501 single signals unit very very brave uh, and 501 signals unit it was established in um, it was also established it was established in 1966 and uh, 30 squadron of air force it was established in 1969 november the first so this is the 30 squadron of air force very very brave uh, has helped india in a lot of wars and same with 501 signals unit they both got they both got presidential colors awards india and which country they are uh, you know they have signed an agreement to set up a joint working group on fisheries and a hotline between their coast guard to address issue of fishermen so there have been continuous problems regarding fishermen between india and this country now in this country the capital is shri jayawardene puri kotte there is a place called shri jayawardene puri kotte that is the capital of this country and uh, this country is sri lanka to uh, you know to re uh, resolve the problem of uh, fisheries fishermen because our fishermen go towards their uh, side of the sea and their fishermen they come to our side of the sea so there there are problems in that regard uh, and it is a it is not a land border it is a water border between india and sri lanka that also you should know so answer is sri lanka india did a joint military exercise called sampriti 2016 with which country this is a very important exercise sampriti in fact it was the seventh time these two countries conducted Sampriti 2016. It was a joint military exercise. It took place in Dhaka. So Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh. So the currency of Bangladesh is Taka and the head of state, Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh Hasina. Which tennis player has been ranked number one in the latest men's ATP tennis rankings? So this is a brilliant feat. He became the first British tennis player to be crowned world number one. So Britain never has had, you know, very good uh, tennis players. Uh, there was Tim Henman, there was uh, Fred Ruzeski, but I mean, these players did not uh, make the cut. Uh, now, this uh, man is world number one right now. His name is Andy Murray and he had a great year. First, he won the Wimbledon, then he won Olympic gold medal also. So, he's a great player, Andy Murray. Which team won the Asian Federations Cup at Doha? Where is Doha? Doha is the capital of Qatar. Qatar or Qatar as it is pronounced, it is a country in the Middle East, very rich country. So, which team won the Asian Federation Cup at Doha? So, the name of the... Uh, I am talking about football tournament here. Asian Federation Cup is for football. The team that won it was Air Force Club Iraq. And the team that was beaten in the final was Bangalore Football Club. So, Bangalore Football Club was beaten in the final. Bangalore Football Club is a team from Bangalore. And Air Force Club Iraq is from Iraq. Iraq, the capital is Baghdad. Which team won the 2016 Asian Women's Hockey Champions Trophy held in Singapore? Uh, Asian Women's Hockey Champions Trophy, it was won by India. Very thrilling match. India beat two, India beat by a margin of two is to one. And which team did India beat? India beat China. So the victory was even more sweeter. Anyways, uh, this it was played in Singapore. National Council of Applied Economic Research, which is called NCAER. It has forecasted India's GDP growth rate at what percent in 2016 fiscal? What is the meaning of 2016 fiscal? It means 1st April 2016 to 31st March 2017. This is called financial year or fiscal. It means the same. Now, in 2016 fiscal, India's GDP growth rate will be 7.6% according to NCAER. My first question for today, what will be India's GDP growth according to the World Bank in 2016? Is it 7.6% or not? Anyways, write it in comments. I will ask five questions during the course of this video and let's see if you are able to answer. Do not Google, just check your own knowledge. Government has cancelled the licenses of how many NGOs? So NGOs are also compliant to the various laws like Foreign Exchange Regulation Act, Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Then they also have to file their returns. If anybody, any one of you has an NGO, you will agree with me. Even NGOs have to file their returns. They have to show their donations. They have to be transparent. Uh, now, under Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, how many NGOs did not renew, you know, uh, within the deadline? So, there, 
licenses were cancelled by the by the government how many ngos under the foreign contribution regulation act under fcra there were 11000 ngos their licenses were cancelled which journalist he won the ramnath goenka excellence in journalism award ramnath goenka excellence award is given to very few journalists ramnath goenka who was he he was the founder of indian express the famous newspaper indian express so ramnath goenka excellence in journalism award was was given to him because he wrote a book recently uh, and uh, the name of the book is examining the ideological roots of hindutva this is very very important examining the ideological roots of hindutva this is a book written by this particular journalist and pradhan mantri prime minister narendra modi was supposed to give him the award but he said no i will not take the award from prime minister narendra modi I, so he refused the award his name is akshay mukul akshay mukul india and which other country have signed an oil production deal worth about 1.5 1.45 billion us dollar 1.45 billion us dollar is approximately 10000 crore rupees 10000 crore rupees so which uh, with which country we have signed an oil production deal this country is hugely dependent on oil almost it's is 60 to 70% of the economy depends on the export of petrol it is a member of opec organization of petroleum exporting country the name is venezuela second question for today what is the capital of venezuela what is the capital of venezuela so saudi arabia capital is riyadh iraq is baghdad and iran is tehran india and which country they have agreed to enhance the collaboration and cooperation in the energy sector so for example there will be focus on converting energy from waste waste to energy hydro power that is generation generation of energy from running water mechan using mechanical energy of the water to convert it into electrical energy smart metering and solar energy also so there will be all kind all kinds of energy collaboration with which country india and which country have agreed to enhance the collaboration in energy sector this country is sweden the capital of sweden is stockholm and sweden is also the country that gives uh, the majority of the nobel prize that's right sweden gives nobel prize except nobel peace prize which is given by norway norway the capital is oslo and norway has a very famous chess player magnus carlsen who is the world chess champion finland is a small country the capital is um, you know helsinki and denmark is also a small country the capital is copenhagen these four countries are the happiest four of the happiest countries in the world and they are called scandinavian countries which company uh, which company uh, has a debt of 5000 crore rupees but that has been restructured because rbi has a scheme which is called s4a scheme very very important which is called sustainable structuring of stressed asset i repeat sustainable structuring of stressed asset scheme also called s4a scheme under this scheme rbi will help the companies to restructure their loans so that they can be put out of the you know debt and this became the first company to restructure is 5000 crore debt by the rbi uh, s4a scheme the name of the company is hcc hcc when do we observe the world tsunami awareness day so whenever in the under the ocean there are various uh, reason there are various reasons for a tsunami like there is an earthquake there are cyclones and all those things so you know that cyclone uh, tsunami uh, became a very famous word when there was tsunami um, you know uh, first time and world tsunami awareness day is basically to spread awareness about tsunami and how we can do early evacuation you know how we can prevent large scale mortality and morbidity so world tsunami awareness day we celebrate on 5th of november that's right 5th of november which scheme has been launched by the government to provide free health checkups to pregnant women at government health center and hospital so under this scheme there will be free health checkup which will be given to the pregnant women at government health center government health centers are like primary health center community health center etc and government hospitals also there will be free health checkup the name of this scheme is pradhan mantri surakshit matritv abhiyan pradhan mantri surakshit matritv abhiyan you can get the name in short also pmsma name the country that hosted the first ever international agro biodiversity congress the country that hosted the first ever international agro biodiversity congress it was hosted by india and where in india new delhi so this was a very very important uh, um, delegation and it was attended by 900 delegates from 60 countries and basically it was about how to do farmer empowerment you know how to encourage farming and role role in agro biodiversity management etc india is the answer new delhi commonwealth human rights initiative which looks after the human rights uh, 
uh, abuses in the Commonwealth country. It is called CHRI in short. It organized a national workshop on the condition of prisons in the country. In which city? So in our country, the condition of prisons, uh, there was a workshop on it. It was, uh, it was uh, organized in which city? It was organized in, again, New Delhi. Recently, a Mahatma Gandhi statue, father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi, his statue was recently inaugurated at the ambassador office, consulate office in which city? In which city Mahatma Gandhi statue was recently inaugurated? It was inaugurated in Dubai, Dubai consulate office. And uh, this is very important. This statue is, uh, you know, it is two and a half feet in height and 10 kg in weight. How much dearness alliance has been approved by the president of India, Pranam Mukherjee? What is dearness alliance? See, dearness alliance is the alliance which the government gives you to offset the price rise so that your earnings are not affected by the increase in the price, increase in, you know, inflation. So that is called dearness alliance. President Pranam Mukherjee increased that, approved the 2% uh, hike, 2% increase in dearness alliance. And this will put a burden of 5,622 crore rupees on the exchequer. India's first titanium project, India's first titanium project is being built in which state? See, titanium is very, very important and uh, titanium is important um, for a lot of reasons. It is used as implant, titanium implant, bone implant, teeth implant, uh, used in healthcare. So India's first titanium will be built in, uh, you know, a city which you would not have heard. It is called Ganjam and Ganjam district is there in Odisha. So it will be built in Odisha and in this uh, plant, uh, 36,000 ton of titanium slag and 20,000 ton of pig iron will be produced each year. Now the government has put a penalty, a fine of 1.55 billion dollars that is approximately 10,000 crore rupees on which company because this company was producing natural gas in the fields of a government company ONGC without permission in the Krishna Godavari basin. So which is that fraud, which is this company which was doing this fraud of producing the natural gas in the government owned areas of the Krishna Godavari basin. The name is Reliance Industries Limited. Reliance Industries Limited. Which state government has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Civil Aviation Ministry for Regional Connectivity Scheme, which is called Udan? See, Udan is called Ude Deshka Am Nagrik. That is the full form. Ude Deshka Am Nagrik. That is in short Udan. And basically, Udan is a scheme where, see, government is uh, government wants to increase the number of people who who uh, can avail the airlines. So right now, around eight crore air tickets are being sold every year and by 2022 government wants to increase it to 30 crores so to make it more affordable for the poor etc they have launched the scheme called udan which is a regional connectivity scheme now you have to tell me which state government signed a mou with civil aviation ministry for this scheme which government will implement this scheme it will be assam assam has a bjp government the name of the cm is sarbananda sonowal sarbananda sonowal and the capital of assam is dispur which industry trade group has launched startup mentorship circle to encourage and assist startups? What are startups? New businesses are called startups. Uh, new businesses are called startup. Now the question is which industry trade group has launched startup mentorship circle? The name is Confederation of Indian Industry, which is called CII. Which state has been awarded for outstanding work in the field of electronic governance? And this, this happened at the state of the states conclave 2016. So which state in India has, uh, you know, contributed to digital India by implementing electronic governance in the best possible manner as per the state of the state's enclave 2016, it was awarded. This state is Haryana. It's a BJP ruled state and the chief minister of Haryana is ML Khattar. Who is the first Indian to be the brand ambassador for Switzerland tourism? Switzerland tourism has made which Indian as its brand ambassador and this is the first time an Indian has uh, been robbed in uh, as the brand ambassador. This honor was given to Ranveer Singh. His movie is coming Befikre. Second question for today, who is the actress in Befikre opposite Ranveer Singh? That is the second question for today. Who has been named the highest paid woman in music for 2016 in Forbes annual list? She made uh, around 170 million dollars between 1st June 2015 and 1st June 2016. 170 million dollars is her earning for the year 2000, I mean during this one year gap, June to June. 
and her name is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Second was Adele, or Adele as she is called, and her same her uh, song Hello last year was uh, one of the one of the biggest hits. It broke the YouTube uh, record for the maximum number of views also. And number three on the list was Madonna. Uh, she uh, grossed around hundred and so I mean uh, third was Madonna. First was Taylor Swift. Who has been elected as chairperson of Price Waterhouse Coopers (PwC India)? PwC India, Price Waterhouse Cooper is one of the biggest companies in the world, not just India. Its chairman has been uh, changed now. There is a, they have selected a new chairman. Earlier it was Mr. Deepak Kapoor who was a two-time chairman. Now it is Mr. Shamal Mukherjee. Shamal Mukherjee. China has selected which film? as its official entry for the 89th oscar oscar awards are also called academy awards so which movie china is sending as its official entry in the best foreign language film category what is the name of that chinese film the name is zhuang zhang and indian actors have also played part in this one indian actor called sonu sood is there then there is a indian actor called neha sharma ali fazal they all are part in this film zhuang zhang what is the name of the online platform that was launched in our country that explains the central and state laws in a user friendly method so you know that the common public does not know much about the various laws especially related to harassment sexual harassment domestic violence dowry anti corruption etc and this is a great effort uh, a website has been launched which will have the explanation of all of these laws in a very user friendly method very lucid explanation what is the name of the website nyay gawa sabut aur vakil nyay means justice gawa means witness sabut means again uh, uh, it means witness and uh, vakil means lawyer so nyay is the name of the website it is called nyay.in do open this website and check it out mangat ram sharma he passed away recently he was related to which field mangat ram sharma so mangat ram sharma was related to politics he was the former deputy chief minister of jammu and kashmir and he was also a six time mla from jammu and kashmir who is author of the book an era of darkness the british empire in india he also participate he had also participated few months back in a very beautiful debate uh, regarding the british uh, rule in india his name is shashi tharoor shashi tharoor he is author of the book an era in darkness and this book was launched by our uh, vice president mr hamid ansari what was the theme of the world tsunami awareness day so world tsunami awareness day i told you we celebrated it on 5th of november to spread awareness about tsunami and uh, the theme this year was effective education and evacuation drills effective education is necessary for tsunami and evacuation is as much important evacuation means when we evacu when we basically um, you know get rid of people from a place by uh, safely relocating them to another location the indian railways have set a target to achieve what in the next 5 years with an investment of rupees 25000 crore this was announced by the railway minister suresh prabhu from next year onwards railway budget and general budget will be same there will be no separate rail budget for that there was a committee being set up third question for today and the most difficult question for today what was the name of the committee that recommended that the in you know the railway budget and the general budget should be combined they should be presented together and not separately what was the name of that that is the third question for today so the indian railways has set a target to achieve 100% decarbonization and 90% electrification and this electrification will be done on a, on tracks of 25000 km magnitude 25000 km is the is the length of the tracks which will be electrified electrified and 900% decarbonization will be achieved so answer is a and for that 25000 crore investment will be will be uh, spent which mobile application was launched by suresh prabhu for reduction in energy use by 15 to 20% so suresh prabhu the ministry of railways has launched a mobile app and their target is that they should re reduce the energy by 15 to 20% what is the name of the app the app is called rail saver rail saver What is the name of the largest military transport aircraft of Indian Air Force that was deployed recently in Arunachal Pradesh? Arunachal Pradesh, the capital is Ita Nagar, and uh, there is a place in Arunachal Pradesh called Tawang, which is a disputed area, uh, and China claims it's uh, you know it has its own territory. 
So what is the name of the largest military transport aircraft of Indian Air Force that was deployed? And it is the largest military transport aircraft. The name is C-17 Globemaster. This is absolutely essential if we are to up our up the ante against China and increase our military capabilities. Which country's airline, which is called People's Vienna Lin, it has started the shortest international flight in the world. It is just a eight minute flight between Switzerland and Germany. There is a place in Switzerland called St. Gallen and there is a place in Germany called Friedrich Schaffen. Between these, the distance is only worth eight minutes of flight. But this airline has started this flight. It is the world's shortest flight. Which airline? The name of the airline is also given. People's Vienna Lin, which country's airline? So even if you don't know this question, you can apply some other GK. Look at the name, Vienna Lin. Vienna is capital of Austria. So it is an Austrian airline. The United States Agency for International Development, it is called USAID and which bank of India? They announced a partnership where they will facilitate a loan of up to 500 crore, which is roughly 75 million dollars for lending to small and medium enterprises operating in the clean energy sector. This is very, very important. And uh, if we are to, uh, you know, we, we are to have our clean energy initiatives, then these kinds of loan are essential to encourage the startups which are operating in the clean energy space. And this initiative along with USAID is done by RBL Bank. RBL Bank, it's a private bank. It's headquartered in Mumbai. How many banks have joined the unified payment interface? Since the launch of the unified payment interface, 26 banks have joined it. Recently, five banks joined it. So if they ask the question, how many new banks have joined the UPI? The answer is five. These five banks are State Bank of India, Allahabad Bank, Bank of Baroda, then there are two private banks, HDFC and IDFC. These are the five banks. But together, the total number has risen to 26. So that is the answer, 26. And since UPI has launched the mobile wallet companies like Chiller, like Free Charge, Paytm, they have uh, been worrying a lot because UPI is a direct competition to these mobile wallets. Which Indian researcher? is one among the 25 people globally to win the German Green Talent Award. So a scientist from India, he is among the 25 people who are selected globally for German Green Talent Award. What is his name? His name is Shamik Chaudhary. Shamik Chaudhary, who was, uh, who was honored with this award for his work in sustainable development, resource efficiency and eco-innovation. Which batsman? He is a 31-year-old year batsman. He plays from Himachal Pradesh. And he plays for HP and he played out a 1015 minute long knock in the Ranji Trophy to record the longest innings in the first class cricket. So he played continuously for 1015 minutes. Just you can calculate the number of hours. Huge innings. And this is the, the now the new record in Ranji Trophy. Uh, you know, in any first class cricket. It is the longest innings by any player. What is the name of this batsman? His name is Rajiv Nayar. Rajiv Nayar. Pandit Amar Dev, he recently passed away. He belonged to which field? Pandit Amar Dev. By name, he looks Indian, but he is not. He is a Sri Lankan. He was a Sri Lankan singer. He was a Padam Shri awardee also, despite being not being an uh, Indian. Very, very famous musician from Sri Lanka. He died. He was 88 years old. He died because of heart attack. National Human Rights Commission. It has organized a two-day workshop on good governance, development and human rights in which city? National Human Rights Commission. National Human Rights Commission is a statutory body. It is not a constitutional body. So National Human Rights Commission organized a two-day workshop on good governance in Shillong. And Shillong is the capital of Meghalaya. Which country will host the seventh session of the Conference of Parties, also called COP7, WHO framework, World Health Organization framework. And this COP7 is basically for tobacco control. Convention on Tobacco Control, which is called FCTC, from 7th to 12th. So which uh, 7 to 12th November it is actually. So it is going on as we speak. Today is 8th and uh, it was inaugurated by uh, our health minister JP Nadda. Mr. JP Nadda. In fact, this will be in India and where in India it will be in Greater Noida. Gorewada Zoo. Gorewada Zoo was in news recently. It is located in which state and I'll tell you why it is in the news. See, uh, it is in news because the chief minister of this state, Devendra Fadanavis, he said that uh, two safari will be started here. Safari is a voyage for uh, uh, looking at animals. That is called a safari. Their African safari and Indian safari will be started in the Gorewada Zoo project in Nagpur. So it is in Maharashtra. That is why it was in news. There will be a 16 kilometer stretch of roads for the jungle safari in the Gorewada Zoo project. 
द सेंटर विल लॉन्च हाउ मेनी क्लीन एनर्जी इक्विटी फंड टू सपोर्ट द गवर्नमेंट्स एम्बिशियस टारगेट ऑफ एडिंग वन सेवेंटी फाइव गीगा वॉट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी जनरेशन कैपेसिटी बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सो द गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स टू इन यू नो हैव वन सेवेंटी फाइव गीगा वॉट ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी दैट इज देयर टारगेट बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू एंड येस इट इज एन एम्बिशियस टारगेट इट इज नॉट इजी टू अचीव एंड फॉर दैट गवर्नमेंट नीड्स टू एनकरेज द यू नो इट वॉन्ट्स टू हैव लॉट ऑफ फंड सो दैट इट कैन इट कैन फाइनेंस द न्यू वेंचर्स हाउ मच फंड इट इज टू बिलियन डॉलर फंड द सेंटर विल लॉन्च टू बिलियन डॉलर फंड फॉर क्लीन एनर्जी इनिशियटिवस to commemorate which foundation day of the indian air force the central air command of the indian air force conducted a spectacular aerobatic aerobatic activity at the air force station so uh, air force station uh, it was in lucknow actually in uh, uh, a place called bakshi ka talab so it was indian air force 84th foundation day 84th foundation day which of the following has become the first state to launch a cyber police station in all of its districts so in all the districts of this state there will be one at least one cyber police station and this will be the first indian state to do so it is led by bjp shiv sena combined the chief minister is devendra fadnavis the answer is maharashtra now the reserve bank of india has directed the banks to ensure that at least 10% of their atms dispense which denomination banknotes within the next 15 days to keep in line with the clean note policies objectives and to ensure that requirement of public for this denomination bank notes are met and just now narendra modi announced that 500 and 1000 rupees notes will be banned they will be rendered invalid and this was in directly in sync with this policy that proves that narendra modi has had been planning to do it for a while because first rbi directed atms the banks that 10% of their atm will dispense only this denomination notes it is 100 rupee notes because they are in the market there will be a shortage of 100 rupee notes now so they directed uh for the next 15 days at least 10% of the all the atms of the banks will be uh dispensing 100 rupee notes which bank has launched overdraft facility for salaried home loan borrowers which bank has launched overdraft facility for salaried home loan loan borrowers uh, and 1 crore rupees is the limit uh, the the customers can the salaried customers uh, can take home loans up to rupees 1 crore for their personal needs against their property that is as collateral so this has been done by icici bank the chief of the icici bank is chanda kochar which company has signed a memorandum of understanding with the human resource development ministry our hrd minister is prakash javadekar from maharashtra and this will create more job opportunity for indian students so which company has done this so there is a hint in this job opportunity this is related to jobs it is a social media website for connecting professionally linkedin is the answer linkedin has signed a mou with the hrd ministry on 2nd of november which you know which person who became the first sikh to be appointed to the canadian senate senate we uh, senate we call uh, you know the upper house see in indian parliament we have a lower house and the upper house right upper house is called rajya sabha lower house is called the lok sabha canada also has a senate but wherever you will hear most of the times uh, you will have uh, you know uh, upper house so canadian senate the first sikh to be appointed is sarabjit singh marwa and uh, the uh, the head of state of canada is justin trudeau his father was also canadian head of state who has been appointed as the first brand ambassador as the brand ambassador not first as the brand ambassador of equita small finance bank equita small finance bank who is the brand ambassador it is ravi chandar ashwin all rounder ravi chandar ashwin ministry of railways appointed which person as the brand ambassador for swachh rail mission he is a great person i think bharat ratna should be bestowed on him because he has um, you know he has brought social justice uh, to lot of people who were trapped in manual scavenging who were not given social status because of their caste he is the founder of sulab his name is dr bindeshwar pathak he is the new brand ambassador for swachh rail mission by ministry of railways who has been appointed as the next ambassador of india to lebanon by ministry of external affair fourth question for today what is the capital of lebanon write the capital of lebanon in comments and don't google don't see here and there check your own knowledge be honest to yourself okay who has been appointed as the next ambassador of india to lebanon by ministry of external affair his name is sanjeev aroda ifs officer sanjeev aroda which state became the third open defecation free state in the country when you go to 
uh, relieve yourself when you go to toilet uh, to relieve yourself and you don't have toilets available in your society then that is called open defecation so you might go on railway tracks in the fields agricultural fields etc and recently sikkim and himachal pradesh they became open defecation free so which state after sikkim and himachal pradesh has become open defecation free it is kerala the most literate state in india with 94% literacy according to 2011 census ruled by cpm and the chief minister is pinarayi vijayan pradhan mantri narendra modi he launched saur sujal yojana this is related to supplying of what to the poor farm poor farmers what at the subsidized price so according to saur sujal yojana saur means solar in english so solar sujal yojana what will be provided to the farmers at subsidized price at reduced price it is solar powered irrigation pump solar power irrigation pump which will be the first state in india to implement this yojana which is called saur sujal yojana it will be chatisgarh it is a bjp ruled state and in chatisgarh we have the chief minister dr raman singh which state government has launched a scheme which is called madhu babu ayan sahayata shibir also called mass scheme madhu babu ayan sahayata shibir or mass scheme to provide legal assistance to deprived sections of the society at the grassroots level and uh, this is to provide legal help so the poor do not have enough legal help they don't have the money to afford legal help costly lawyers so the government will provide them the legal help and this has been started by odisha the chief minister of odisha is navin patnayak he is from bjd party which is biju janata dal which state government has launched the rupees 200 crore yamuna river front project so yamuna you know is a river which takes its origin from yamunotri glacier in uttarakhand and it is one of the most dirtiest rivers of india even just today i saw that a lot of people were praying for the holy chhat puja and there were just forms of uh, toxic uh, material which were emanating from yamuna so it is one of the most toxic rivers right now and uh, taking a dip in yamuna can give you uh, severe skin diseases so uh, rupees 200 crore yamuna river front project is launched by delhi so lot of important cities are on the bank of yamuna like delhi like uh, mathura vrindavan agra naya raipur naya raipur is the new capital of which state of india and this was declared as the new capital on the 16th foundation day or the 16th statehood day so naya raipur is the capital of chatisgarh which federal law enforcement agency has made it mandatory has made it mandatory for the public sector banks you know there are 27 public sector banks in india nationalized banks to report any bank fraud of funds of over rupees 1 crore so if there is any money related money laundering or any fraud related to money above 1 crore rupees then you have to report it to the federal law enforcement agency it has made it mandatory the banks need to report these frauds now and this has been done by central vigilance commission central vigilance commission has made it mandatory for the public sector banks the reserve bank of india you know that the new governor of reserve bank of india is urjit patel on 4th of october he presented his first monetary policy review now we are waiting for the second monetary policy review in december so the reserve bank of india has opened its second office of the banking ombudsman ombudsman is a is a uh, is a government appointed uh, lawyer who listens to the uh, grievances of the public at free of cost so rbi has opened its second banking ombudsman office in which city it is in new delhi the first office will look after the um, you know in uh, delhi and jammu and kashmir and the second office will look after ghaziabad and gautam buddh nagar district of uttar pradesh and Uh, some parts of haryana also who has been appointed as the new prime minister of south korea south korea the capital is seoul don't confuse it with north korea south korea and north korea they are enemies their border is called demilitarized zone and north korea's uh, capital is pyongyang north korea is ruled by a dictator kim jong un and south korea has a democratically elected uh, prime minister and now he has changed she was changed uh, and the new prime minister is Kim Byung Jun Kim Byung Jun and the president he was appointed by the president Park Geun Hye Which crown prince will be crowned as the next king of Thailand so you know that Thailand the capital is Bangkok and uh, Thailand's king Mr Bhumi Bol Adulaj he passed away recently so which prince will be the next king his name is Maha Vajira Longkorn Name the head of Twitter India who resigned from his post recently he was with twitter for 4 years he was the head of twitter and he took twitter to great heights in india his name is rishi jetli or was rishi jetli because he is no more as uh, the head of twitter india who has been appointed 
as the new non-executive part-time chairman of South Indian Bank. South Indian Bank is a Kerala-based bank. Its headquarters is in Thrissur. And who has been appointed as the non new non-executive chairman? The name of this person is Salim Gangadharan. Salim Gangadharan. Presently, he is an independent director on the board of the private sector bank headquartered in Kerala, which is the South Indian Bank. Which journalist has been chosen for the Raja Ram Mohan Roy Award for his outstanding contribution to journalism? His name is S. Nihal Singh. He has been chosen for the Raja Ram Mohan Roy Award. And you know Raja Ram Mohan Roy was a great visionary who abolished Shati Pratha, etc. And this is a great honor for S. Nihal Singh. Which singer will be honored with Centenary Award for Indian Film Personality uh, of the Year at the 47th International Film Festival of India, which is IFFI in Goa? What is the name? If you have seen the movie Hum Aapke Hai Kaun in Hindi, most of the songs were sung by him. His name is S.P. Bal Subramaniam. He has sung over 40,000 songs. He will be given Centenary Award for Indian Film Personality of the Year at the 47th Indian Film Fest International Film Festival of India. Which famous South Korean director will be honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the 47th International Film Festival of India? So what is the name of that South Korean director who will be given Lifetime Achievement Award in India at the 47th International Film Festival which will take place in Goa? So it is Im Kwon Taik. Im Kwon Taik. Which power company has commissioned 50 megawatt wind power project in Jaisalmer, Rajasthan? It's a power company, power production company. It has commissioned 50 megawatt wind power project plant in Jaisalmer, Rajasthan. The name of the company is NHPC. What is NHPC? Uh, full form, can you tell me? National Hydroelectric Power Corporation. The sports ministry of which country has made it mandatory for all the national sports federation, be it the federation for boxing, federation for badminton, any federation. Any national sports federation will have to register themselves with the NGOPS. What is the PS here? So PS here refers to partnership system. It is a portal. Uh, and this is to promote transparency in receiving grants. So grants are, uh, you know, uh, they are granted by the government of India. Only then they will be able to receive the grants when they are registered with the NGOPS portal. This announcement has been made by the Sports Ministry of India. Australian government has announced how many grants worth $630,000 for several projects in the field of education, science, sports, arts and culture? So the Australian head of state is Malcolm Turnbull and uh, Australian government has announced how many grants? So total number of grants that have been uh, accepted is 19 with India. 19. The International Day is celebrated which is basically to spread awareness about the crimes that happen against journalists. The role of journalists is also not easy. Their lives are always in danger if they are covering an area of insurgency for example. So there is an international day to end impunity for crimes against journalists. It is observed on which day to spread awareness about the same. It is observed globally on 2nd of November every year. World Savings Day or World Thrift Day is observed every year on which day. Savings are very very important and you saw that in 2007-2008 recession, how India was saved because of the nature of its savings. So World Savings Day is observed every year on 31st of October. However, in India, this year we celebrated, in India, World Savings Day was observed on October 30 because on October 30, Indira Gandhi was killed. So death of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was on 30th October. So World Savings Day is on October 31st, in India, October 30th. And this time the theme was grabbing hold of your financial future. Grabbing hold of your financial future was the theme of the World Savings Day. When is the World Vegan Day celebrated? Vegan day and vegetarianism, there is a difference. Vegans don't even take milk. Basically, they don't take any animal products like leather, etc. Vegetarian is only related to the non-consumption of meat. That is the difference between vegetarianism and vegan. So, World Vegan Day is celebrated to promote healthy lifestyle. Being vegan is one of the most healthy lifestyle as observed by WHO also. Consumption of meat can cause various types of cancer as per the World Health Report, World Health Organization Report of 2016. So when is the World Vegan Day celebrated? It is celebrated every year on 1st of November. Scientists from which institute? They have designed a solid in the form of a salt which will fight the bacterial infections. So which institute scientists have designed this salt which can fight bacterial infection? It is done by the eminent scientists from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. That is why Bangalore is called Science City of India. Surya Kiran, it is a joint military exercise between India and which country? It's a direct question. Surya Kiran, very, very important, um, very, very important exercise between India and Nepal. It, this time it was the 10th exercise 
एंड इट टुक प्लेस इन नेपाल आर्मी बैटल स्कूल साल झंडी इन नेपाल सो द आंसर इज नेपाल अकॉर्डिंग टू यूनिसेफ यूनिसेफ हेडक्वार्टर इज इन न्यूयॉर्क एंड द हेडक्वार्टर ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन इज ऑल्सो इन न्यूयॉर्क यूनिसेफ वर्क फॉर चिल्ड्रन यूनाइटेड नेशन इंटरनेशनल चिल्ड्रन इमरजेंसी फंड अकॉर्डिंग टू यूनिसेफ स्टडी थ्री हंड्रेड मिलियन थर्टी करोड़ चिल्ड्रन इन इंडिया इन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड चिल्ड्रन दे लिव इन द प्लेस वेयर विच पॉल्यूशन एक्सीड्स द डब्ल्यू एच ओ लिमिट वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लिमिट सो विच टाइप ऑफ पॉल्यूशन हैज अफेक्टेड द मोस्ट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन इन द वर्ल्ड नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड चिल्ड्रन दे लिव इन प्लेस वेयर पॉल्यूशन एक्सीड डब्ल्यू एच ओ लिमिट इट इज एयर पॉल्यूशन एयर पॉल्यूशन हु हैज बिन इलेक्टेड एज द न्यू प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ लेबन आई हैव आस्ट यू द कैपिटल ऑफ लेबन ऑल्सो नेम स्टार्ट विद बी दैट्स द हिंट तो द न्यू प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ लेबन इज मिशेल आउन मिशेल आउन व्लादिमिर जेल्डिन ही रिसेंटली पास अवे ही वॉज रिलेटेड टू विच फील्ड सो व्लादिमिर जेल्डिन ही वॉज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट थिएटर एक्टर्स ऑफ ऑल टाइम एंड ही वॉज द ओल्डेस्ट थिएटर एक्टर ही वॉज वन हंड्रेड वन ईयर ओल्ड सो द आंसर इज थिएटर ही वॉज फ्रॉम रशिया इंडिया हैज साइंड अ मेमोरेंडम ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग विद पैलेस्टीन टू सेट अप अ टेक्नोलॉजिकल पार्क इन विच सिटी पैलेस्टाइन वी हैव साइंड अ एम ओ यू विद पैलेस्टाइन टू सेट अप अ टेक्नो पार्क इन विच सिटी दिस टेक्नोलॉजिकल पार्क विल बी बिल्ट इन रामल्ला रामल्ला एंड फॉर दैट इंडिया इज ऑल्सो गिविंग अवे ट्वेल्व मिलियन डॉलर एज अ ग्रांट हु हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज चेयरमैन ऑफ द सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्ट टैक्स इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड सी बी डी टी दिस इज अ शॉर्ट शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अपॉइंटमेंट दिस इज अ पर्सन नो लेस देन द चेयरमैन इज अपॉइंटेड सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो ही हैज रिप्लेस रानी सिंह एंड द नेम इज सुशील चंदर सुशील चंदर इज द न्यू चेयरमैन ही हैज टेकन ओवर फ्रॉम रानी सिंह विच स्टेट हैज बीन रैंक्ड नंबर वन इन द कंट्री द मोस्ट फार्मर फ्रेंडली स्टेट दिस वॉज एज पर द टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन एग्रीकल्चरल मार्केटिंग एंड फार्मर फ्रेंडली रिफॉर्म्स इंडेक्स एंड दिस सर्वे वॉज कंडक्टेड बाई नीति आयोग इट इज महाराष्ट्र आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिपीट हु वन द मैंस एर्स्ट बैंक ओपन सिंगल्स टाइटल आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट टेनिस हेयर इट्स दैट वर्ल्ड नंबर वन प्लेयर एंडी मुरे ही डिफीटेड फ्रांस प्लेयर जो विलफेड सोंगा इन द फाइनल काइली वर्जोसा शी वन द मिस इंटरनेशनल टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन एंड इट द कॉम्पिटिशन वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन टोक्यो विच इज द कैपिटल ऑफ जपैन एंड इन टोक्यो वी विल ऑल्सो हैव द इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक्स द समर ओलंपिक्स इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी द क्वेश्चन विच दे आर आस्किंग इज काइली वर्जोसा हु रिसेंटली बिकेम मिस इंटरनेशनल टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन बिलोंग्स टू विच कंट्री शी बिलोंग्स टू फिलिपाइंस द कैपिटल ऑफ फिलिपाइंस इज बनीला वट इज द थीम ऑफ द टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन विजिलेंस अवेयरनेस वीक एंड एज आई सेट विजिलेंस अवेयरनेस वीक इज अ वीक इन विच वी हैव थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर एज इट वन ऑफ द डेज सो वट इज द थीम ऑफ टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन विजिलेंस अवेयरनेस वीक द थीम वॉज पब्लिक पार्टिसिपेशन इन प्रोमोटिंग इंटेग्रिटी एंड एरेडिकेटिंग करप्शन एम एन शर्मा पास अवे रिसेंटली ही वॉज द चीफ आर्किटेक्ट ऑफ विच इंडियन सिटी एम एन शर्मा वेरी एमिनेंट आर्किटेक्ट ही वॉज द चीफ आर्किटेक्ट ऑफ विच इंडियन सिटी इट इज द कैपिटल ऑफ हरियाणा एंड पंजाब चंडीगढ़ Now there is a housing for all initiative which is called Paripidda Mission. It has been launched by which state government? Paripidda Mission. It is basically a housing for all initiative. It has been launched by government of Kerala. Silvio Gazzaniga. He recently passed away. Why was he so famous? Did he design FIFA World Cup trophy, Eiffel Tower, Milan City, or the United Nations logo? So he designed the FIFA World Cup trophy. And the FIFA World Cup trophy basically Silvio Gazzaniga. He was Italian. and fifa world cup uh, is organized by fifa the president of fifa the chairman of fifa is gianni infantino he took over from sepp blatter and gianni infantino is also italian there is a book which is written which is called death is certain immortal death is certain for all who are born or is it because this book is about ashwatthama a character from the great uh, mahabharata who is believed to be still alive so there is a is a book written on his life who wrote this book this bit book is a very very significant book it is written by krishna uday shankar krishna uday shankar the international forum there was a international forum recently on adopting an ict perspective to education and learning it took place in which city and this was organized by ibe which is international board of education unesco in partnership with google where did we have this um, international forum on ad adopting ict perspective it took place in new delhi Which badminton player of India has won the Bahrain International Challenge Men's Singles Badminton Tournament? His name is Pratul Joshi, and he beat he beat another Joshi in the final. His name was Aditya Joshi. So he beat Aditya Joshi in the final. He won the Bahrain Men's Singles Badminton Tournament. 
who will be given lifetime achievement award at the 2016 dubai international film festival which uh, honorable indian will be awarded lifetime achievement award at 2016 dubai international film festival it is celebrated actress rekha pradhan mantri modi inaugurated asia's largest man made jungle safari in which state as i said safari, safari is a voyage for for looking uh, out for animals uh, in a forest area or in a biosphere reserve area now pm modi inaugurated asia's largest man made jungle safari in which state he inaugurated it in chatisgarh in naya raipur it will be asia's largest man made jungle safari and it will also cover a zoo which is called nandan van zoo the bhitar kanika national park it was in news recently because the unesco had sent two a delegation of two people to study its ecosystem bhitar kanika national park is in which state of india bhitar kanika national park it is in the mahanadi delta area in odisha which state government has launched the health campaign health awareness campaign called aware and care aware and care it has been launched by the punjab government to spread awareness about hepatitis cervical cancer etc the election commission of india it recently launched an online survey and this survey is basically to assess the knowledge level of awareness about the overseas indian citizen also called oci but this survey was organized in collaboration with which institute it was done in collaboration with tis which is tata institute of social science in chembur in mumbai one of the best colleges in india and uh, tis collaborated with the election commission of india and uh, they launched a online survey to check the level of awareness in oci cities ocis petrotech 2016 it is name of a conference which was held recently this is regarding international oil and gas so where was it held petrotech 2016 where was it held it took place in in fact it will take place in new delhi because it is it is on 5th of december very very important the theme will be hydrocarbons to fuel the future choices and challenges which indian actor has worked in the film zuan jang and you know that zuan jang is in china's entry in the oscar academy awards 89th oscar awards it is china's official entry which indian actor has worked in this film it is sonu sood as i said before on which day do we observe world radiography day world radiography day to help in radio diagnosis radio cognosy etc the day is celebrated 8th of november november the 8th there is a international day for preventing the exploitation of the environment in war and armed conflict whenever there is a war and armed conflict there is degradation of environment to prevent it to spread awareness about it there is a international day which is celebrated when do we celebrate it it is celebrated on 6th of november 6th of november the national aeronautics and space administration nasa which is the space agency of america it has built the largest space telescope in the world what is the name so previously the largest space telescope was the hubble space telescope it was the world's largest telescope for almost 26 years but now it has been taken over by james webb space telescope which is now the largest space telescope in the world telescope is an object which is used to see the far off objects who is the prime minister of united kingdom who is on official visit to india right now in the first week of november so it is theresa may she is only the second female prime minister of united kingdom after margaret thatcher natalie babbitt she recently passed away she belonged to which field natalie babbitt she was a very famous american author so the answer is author researchers at the indian institute of science education and research also called iiscr in short they uh, this institute is in tiruvananthapuram in kerala they have developed which compound to help in recovering the marine oil spill so whenever a ship uh, capsizes or a boat capsizes in the ocean there is oil spills which kill all which kill which affect the aquatic wildlife aquatic life aquatic marine life so which compound has been uh, designed by indian institute of science education and research scientist to help in the same so that the oil spill can be resolved and the aquatic life is not affected the name of the compound is gelator nasa is developing an instrument which is called billy and this is to see the possibility of the life on mars which is called exobiology to check where, whether there is a possibility of life in outer planets or not so to see on mars uh, mars is our neighbor mars and venus both are our neighbor the closest is venus to earth then mars so what is the full form of billy which nasa has developed the full form is bio indicator lidar instrument bio indicator lidar instrument statehood day was celebrated by all of these states except which one 
सो कर्नाटक केरला एंड छत्तीसगढ़ दे सेलिब्रेटेड स्टेट टू डे ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर सो यस दिस इज ट्रू गुजरात महाराष्ट्र मध्य प्रदेश मध्य प्रदेश हैज इट ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर नॉट गुजरात एंड महाराष्ट्र सो द आंसर इज बी बिकॉज दे आर आस्किंग एक्सेप्ट विच वन पंजाब हरियाणा केरला येस ऑल ऑफ दैम ऑल ऑफ दी स्टेट दे सेलिब्रेट ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर एम पी पंजाब कर्नाटका येस सो द आंसर इज सेकंड बिकॉज मध्य प्रदेश सेलिब्रेट्स इट ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर सो विच आर ऑल द स्टेट्स दैट सेलिब्रेट द स्टेट हुड डे ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर कर्नाटका केरला छत्तीसगढ़ मध्य प्रदेश पंजाब हरियाणा एंड मध्य प्रदेश या दैट्स इट वट इज द नेम गिवन टू अ न्यू वेराइटी ऑफ अर्ली मैच्योरिंग इट्स अ एक्स्ट्रा अर्ली मैच्योरिंग वेराइटी ऑफ अरहर विच इज अ पल्स इट इज कॉल्ड तूवर इट इज डेवलप्ड बाय द साइंटिस्ट एट द इंडियन काउंसिल फॉर एग्रीकल्चर रिसर्च वट इज द नेम गिवन टू दिस न्यू वेराइटी ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा अर्ली मैच्योरिंग वेराइटी ऑफ अ पल्स द नेम इज पूसा अरहर सिक्सटीन विच कंट्री हैज इन्वाइटेड इंडिया टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर प्रोजेक्ट and to develop joint nuclear reactors it is our all weather friend russia the capital of russia is moscow and russia's currency is ruble and the president of russia is vladimir putin and by the way uh, the first reactor research project is known as mbir you can mug up the full form they might ask it model based iterative reconstruction project of russia according to the new report by nascom what is india's rank as the world's largest startup base so top two positions are occupied by usa and uk and india is third uh, in terms of world's largest startup base so these were the important the best multiple choice questions during the course of this video i asked you some questions please share the video as much as you can uh, the last week of october there is a huge difference in the number of views in hindi and english so please encourage me by sharing the videos and that's the only thing that i ask from you thank you very much